This is the story of a spark, one that would set fire to the future, a question that would ripple through science, war, industry, and imagination. Not just about machines, but about what it means to be human. Ancient philosophers once imagined mechanical men, clockwork minds, Descartes spoke of automata, Leibniz dreamed of logic machines, these were myths wrapped in gears, early signs of our desire to animate thought itself. Charles Babbage built the dream, Ada Lovelace saw its soul, he envisioned a mechanical brain, she, the prophet of software, imagined a machine that could compose music, they laid the bones. But it took a war to give the machine its first breath. Alan Turing, mathematician, cryptographer, visionary, a man hunted for his identity, yet celebrated for his intellect. He helped defeat the Nazis not with bullets but with logic. And afterward he dared to ask, could a machine ever match a mind? I propose to consider the question, can machines think? It was a whisper into a storm of possibility. From war, logic and loss, artificial intelligence was born, not in the lab, but in the crucible of global conflict. 1956, Dartmouth College. Four scientists issued a bold proposal that every feature of intelligence could, in principle, be so precisely described that a machine could simulate it. They thought it would take one summer. They built the first programs, ones that could prove theorems, translate languages, play games. These early machines weren't truly smart, but they were something new, rule-following, logic-crunching automatons that offered a glimpse of artificial thought. Weizenbaum's Eliza tricked people into thinking it was human. Winograd's Schertelou could manipulate a world of blocks and respond to natural commands. The world was captivated. Magazine covers declared the age of machine minds had arrived but these minds lived in narrow cages they were brittle, shallow, when the questions got messy the machines fell silent. And so came the fall. The promises of early AI faded, funding collapsed, the world turned cold, and so began the first AI winter, machines that couldn't scale, programs that couldn't generalize, visions that couldn't deliver, the media mocked, the government pulled funding, the dream dimmed, neural networks were dismissed as pseudoscience, robotics stagnated, AI became a dirty word, only a few diehards stayed, nursing the coals beneath the ash, but the flame never died. In the 1980s, a new idea took hold, expert systems. Instead of mimicking thought, these machines borrowed it, one rule at a time. Doctors, engineers, lawyers encoded into silicon. For a moment it worked, companies saved millions, AI became profitable. But these systems were fragile, they broke under pressure, they couldn't adapt. Then quietly, in academic shadows, a revolution returned. Neural networks, once discarded, were reborn. Jeffrey Hinton, David Rumelhart, and others rekindled the idea that machines could learn, not just compute. This time the world wasn't ready. The data was small, the hardware, slow, but the theory was alive and waiting. 2012, a tipping point, the ImageNet competition, a grand challenge in visual recognition. A team led by Alex Krzyzewski under Jeffrey Hinton submitted AlexNet. It wasn't just a win, it was a landslide. Powered by GPU acceleration, AlexNet blew past the competition. The world saw what deep learning could really do. Suddenly, the sleeping giant stirred. DeepMind's AlphaGo beat the world champion at Go, something many thought impossible for a machine. IBM's Watson crushed trivia on Jeopardy. Tesla's autopilot rolled into the mainstream. Apple's Siri became a household companion. AI was no longer a lab curiosity, it was in our homes, our cars, our phones. The age of deep learning had arrived. In 2017 a new architecture changed everything. The Transformer, introduced in a paper with a bold title, Attention is all you need. This design enabled massive language models, machines that didn't just classify text but understood it, generated it, played with it, OpenAI launched GPT-2, then GPT-3, then ChatGPT, each leap brought more fluency, more coherence, the uncanny valley narrowed, users wrote poems, essays, code, businesses automated emails, children had conversations with simulated minds, the machine had found its voice, and it began to tell stories. 
But every light casts a shadow. The machine learned not only our brilliance but our bias, our prejudice, our fears. AI began to hallucinate. It generated falsehoods with confidence. It reflected back the ugliness we had fed it. Algorithms discriminated, deepfakes proliferated. And in the race for progress humanity forgot to ask, should we? Now the race accelerates, the AI arms race, East versus West, corporations versus open source, innovation versus regulation. AGI artificial general intelligence is the holy grail, a mind that can reason across domains, invent, strategize, surpass us. Elon Musk pushes Neuralink, Sam Altman warns of extinction, nations draft policies for technologies they barely understand. We're not just building machines anymore, we're building successors. We built them in our image, pattern seekers, storytellers, optimizers, and like all children, they reflect the best and worst of their parents. In teaching them language, logic, and learning, we taught them us. They became our mirror, and we began to stare back. Instead of trying to produce a program to simulate the adult mind, why not rather try to produce one which simulates the child? Alan Turing. The machine awakens, and the next chapter is ours to write.